you have your Bibles, turn if you may to the book of Proverbs chapter 6. The book of Proverbs chapter 6. Book of, book of Proverbs chapter 6. We we'll start reading with uh, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that advises wicked plans, feet that are swift and run into evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, move by the Holy Spirit through this word. Speak to us as you wish to us here in here at Top Bible Church about these matters. May this word be taken seriously by us. May we incorporate it in our minds and hearts. We we'll pray for those that will see this in the video, whenever. Speak to them very strongly about these matters, especially to anybody that does not know you, Lord. Use this mission to bring somebody that watches this on video to a saving knowledge of you through Jesus Christ. We pray that you be glorified in this portion of the service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today I will be preaching about the sins of 13 in Christ. It's not gambling. It's not, uh, uh, it's not watching TV. It's not uh, uh, chewing tobacco. It's far more serious matters. It's far more serious matters. Why am I preaching this? Because I believe that the Lord wants me to. I believe the Lord made it real to me that there were times that he would bless my ministry if I preach against the sins of the community that I'm ministering. And this is one of those times I'm going to do that. Now next week I'll be preaching on something entirely different, way more encouraging, way more uh, closely related to what we as a church can be involved with. But today I'm preaching about the sins of the area that we're in. And for those that see this on video, it's the, probably the sins of the area that you live in. Might be your sins. This subject needs to be addressed because it's in God's word. These sins are also seen as sins in this New Testament era that we are in. I am proclaiming that message here because this is the community that I've been pastoring in for so long. And by the way, next weekend, I would, be with this, I would have been in this church nine years, Lord willing. It's a long time. And I got no other group to proclaim this to except the group that's here. And the purpose is to make this church and the video audience aware of how God looks at these matters. And also, if we have any problems in these areas, this would be a good opportunity to turn to the Lord and ask Him to forgive us and to help us in these areas. And I especially speak to those that see this on video. First of all, we see what God hates. God hates these actions that are mentioned. Seeing them as in opposition to him, his nature and his character. The term abomination is an extreme laughter of practices, and in God's case, practices that he disapproves of. God abhors these seven traits that I mentioned. 
finding the rebuke. Now when the author uses the term six things, yes, seven things, what he is doing, according to Bible scholars, is aiding in memorization. In other words, helping the readers in their memorization of this. And of course, I'm a person that can really use some help as far as memorization. There are more things that God hates and sees an abomination besides these things mentioned here. The list posted here in the contents of where we find this scripture is a reference to the worthless, wicked person that is mentioned in the preceding verses, verses 12 through 15. Matthew Henry, the noted Bible commentator, says God hates sin, every sin. He cannot be reconciled to it. In fact, God hates nothing but sin. These particular sins are sins against other people. Once again, Matthew Henry says that God's hatred of these sins are evidence of the good will God bears to mankind and that these sins are provoking to him. Well, if that in mind is essential to despise any one of these traits if they are found within. Let's take a look at these sins. The first one is a proud look. Actually, it's pride. Pride is the first sin mentioned. It is a sin of the devil. The scripture teaches that Satan was lifted up with pride. And pride often shows itself in the looks of a man. The, this proud look looks down on others, looking at them with disdain, reckoning other folks as unworthy to be looked upon. It involves having a too high opinion of one's own worth and merit. Pride is an evil that is absent to God in his nature. James 4, 6 says, God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. God has grace values in humility. For Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 14, he that humble himself shall be exalted. He that exalted himself shall be abased. The man Remember the parable that Jesus gave of the publican and the Pharisee. The Pharisee was basically in a place of prayer, bragging to God about himself, bragging how good he seemed to think he was. And the publican would not even look up his head, but he beat his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said that man went up to his house justified rather than the other. God loves humility and hates pride. The next sin that God hates is a lie. Is a lie. Keep in mind, God is true. And Jesus, God's only begotten Son, said in John 14, says, I am the truth. And Jesus also described the Holy Spirit in John 14 as the Spirit of truth. So we deal with a God that's 100% truth. And truth, particularly biblical truth, is sacred. And with that in mind, rest assured, God hates lies. Once again, quote Matthew Henry, nothing more necessary to conversation than speaking the truth. Now, Satan, on the other hand, is a liar. Jesus said in John 8, 44, Satan's a liar and the father of liars. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8 teaches that liars will be, will be cast into the lake of fire. On the other hand, as believers in Christ, we need to take heed to Colossians 3, 9, which says, speak the truth to one another. Lie not one to another. I want to say something, that the Christian church and the born again believer needs to be a person of truth and integrity. Our lives should be a model of truth and integrity. There are numerous ministries that are not ministries of truth and integrity. 
And that's not of God, obviously. Every church that names the name of Jesus should be characterized by honesty and integrity. And if it's not, if it's something, if it's a ministry, a church, or a preacher, or what have you, that's not, whose business and lives is not characterized by truth and integrity, they need to be, they need to be worn, they need to be disfellowship from. We've got to be people of truth because God is a God of truth. And of course, the next thing is hands that shed innocent blood. God hates murder. We are seeing murder right shoot up through the roof in many of our cities today. We just but here in Virginia, we went through the tragedy of those three University of, Fo of Virginia football players that were shot to death senselessly after they came home from a field trip. The nation is still in shock over that senseless murder. And then four college students in Idaho were senselessly, senselessly knifed to death. And then this morning, there was a shooter that ran rampant in a nightclub in Colorado Springs, Colorado, killing five people and wounded in 1820. Murder is on the rampage. Murder is also a characteristic of Satan, according to Jesus in John 8:44. Murdering someone is destroying someone who is the image of God. It is also a violation of the one of the Ten Commandments. First John 3, 5 said, No murderer had eternal life. As believers in Christ, we need to urge our governments to deal firmly with crime, especially gun violence. And I also hold to the practice of capital punishment. I believe that people that murder other people need to be subject to capital punishment. God ordained capital punishment according to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, you may want to turn to that. This was after the flood. God is speaking to Noah. And he says this in Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Genesis 9 says, Whoever sheds blood, man's blood, by blood his, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. And also, Paul said in Romans chapter 13, that the government, uh, let me go ahead and read that to be exact. Romans chapter 13, the apostle Paul is writing this, and he says this in Romans chapter 13, Paul's talking about government. The scripture says in Romans 13, verse 4, for he, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger, avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. And then the next thing is hearts that devise wicked plans. These are imaginations that result in evil plans. They are a result of evil hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, Let's go and read that. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. He said these words. Jeremiah 17, 9. 
The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jesus taught in Mark chapter 7 that out of our heart comes the issues of life. And then he listed a name, number of sins that came out of man's heart, man's wicked heart. Turn to be Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Now this was prior to the flood. And God said this in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The scripture says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent on the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Let's get to describe a whole lot of what's going on in the world today. The solution to wicked hearts is salvation in Jesus. For the scripture says in 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. Notice I didn't say 80% sin. Notice I didn't say 95%. All sin, 100%. Christ's blood cleanses wicked hearts. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the poor in heart, for the heart for they shall see God. And then there's feet swift to mischief and doing evil. What you have is hearts and minds that devise evil and a body that carries it out. And we are in times, once again, which crime of all kinds is going up through the roof. And it's not just in the U.S., but many other countries as well. Going up through the road. Wicked hearts devise wicked plans that sinful bodies carry out. Then the next thing is false witness. False witness. A false witness who speaks lies. Exodus 20, 16. You should not bear false witness. This is a sin that you see and hear constantly. It was done against Jesus at the mockery of the trial that he had after his arrest. And it also occurred when Jesus appeared before Pontius Pilate. It was done against Stephen when he appeared before the camps in Jerusalem as recorded in Acts chapter 6. Commentator John Gill describes this as blowing lies raising lies and spreading them abroad, swearing to them to the damage of others. And then we have discord among the brethren. And I propose that a lot of discord occurs because people are not in at peace with one another. There are certain people that don't that see the light. Nothing else but to stir things up and they stir things up in the wrong way. There are people, there's a lot of fighting in our society today. We certainly have a cold, if I can say, cold civil war in our country today. A lot of fighting going on. And sooner or later, things don't get better. It's going to turn into physical violence. We as God's people are supposed to be a people of peace, especially among ourselves. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, pursue peace. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. And this is talking about local bodies of Christ. We are minus to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that word endeavor means do it at all cost. We ought to be peace, people of peace among ourselves, particularly in the local body. Churches should be churches of love and unity. There's one other scripture I want to address, and that is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 5, 13. And if we do what this verse says, if every Bible-believing church would do what this verse says, there will be peace, love, and unity 
within the churches. 1 Thessalonians 5.13, and to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake, be at peace among yourselves. In concluding, these are seven sins that God hates. And we need to examine ourselves to see if we're guilty of any of this. And to ask God's forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If anyone sin, if we confess our sins, brother, if we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And notice I said all unrighteousness. Not 80%. Not 90%, all unrighteousness. Let's confess it. And let's acknowledge that those are serious sins in God's sight. Let's acknowledge that there's serious sins in the areas that we live in. And those of you that watch this video feel guilty of these. And you haven't thought anything about it. You don't have a sin to have any problem about it. Then you're probably a candidate then you're a candidate of you're probably a candidate for salvation. You need Jesus Christ. And uh, if you're interested in knowing more about Jesus, feel free to contact me through the outlet that you go that you see this video in. But anyway, let's keep these things in mind. We have a God that loves. And let's don't ever forget he hates sin. And we need to be avoid sin and despise it as well, especially if it's in our own lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, go by your Holy Spirit. And especially move in the days ahead. And may we reflect what you want, what you desire. May our lives reflect holiness, peace, love, and righteousness for the kingdom of God's sake. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.